Hello, welcome to episode okay, so two. Here's our blanket. And Excellent. Asymmetrical turn. Dropping and sinking up. I just had to so just notice. Joining us for the second episode next week. So. Namaste. Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Namaste Yoga. I'm flying solo today, kind of. We're doing, we're continuing our series of classes on the Hindu deities and we're working with the Hindu deity Lakshmi today. So I feel very blessed to be in her company. And so um, what I wanted to do today is start um, with the story of Lakshmi. I just wanted to point out that because I'm solo today, I was able to wear one of my other t-shirts, <coughs> the really pretty lavender one from Prima Clothing, and my friend uh, Mai makes these bracelets. And so Lakshmi is a goddess of uh, beauty. So I was thinking about being in beautiful colors and wearing my uh, beautiful jewelry. So um, <coughs> why don't you go ahead, actually before you go, go ahead and rest back, I want you to, we're gonna have two props today. One is the strap and the other is a block. So if you have a strap, great. If not, use the tie from your bathrobe. Um, if you have a block, great. If not, you can use, you know, a chair or a stool or something like that. Okay, and I want to say that I'm gonna be starting today's class with a story. And I want to give credit because the story comes from a really fabulous book that I'm reading right now called Shakti Mantras, Tapping into the Great Goddess Energy Within. And it's by Tom Thomas Ashley Haran. So if we can get a close up on his book here, that would be great. <clears throat> Just a great book. And I'm trying to get him on my radio show right now too, but um, right, he travels like pretty much every week of the year. So he's pretty difficult to get a hold of, but hopefully we'll get him on and have him on returning to the body mind as well. So go ahead and uh, rest back. We're going to start with a story. So settle in, allow yourself to get comfortable. Um, if you're cool, put a blanket over top of you, maybe a couple of pillows behind your knees, maybe one behind your head. Just let yourself get really comfortable and settle in for story time to start today. So we're going to start with the myth of Lakshmi, of how Lakshmi came to existence. And at this point, um, the universe, the material universe hadn't come into being. So this is a bit of a creation story. Um, at this point, the duality of the universe had already manifested through um, the Supreme God. Uh, the etheric universe came into existence and the drama began. And the drama at this point was all good and bad, positive and negative, masculine and feminine, yin and yang, centrifugal and centripetal. All the dualistic forces existed in an etheric non-physical state where they played out for a long time. In this etheric realm of duality, the good forces of the celestial beings constantly strove against the bad forces of the demons for overall supremacy. First one group would gain advantage, and then the other side would prevail for a time. <clears throat> Both groups knew that eventually there would come a state of stasis, or rest, where the existence of the universe would effectively end, much like a wind-up clock that runs down and finally stops altogether. The universe, with them included as part of it, would cease to exist. Naturally, ceasing to exist was not an eventuality that either the demons or the celestials looked forward to with any pleasure. The only thing that could protect them from death at the end of the universe was a precious substance known as the nectar of immortality. And whoever drank this nectar would never perish. Unfortunately, in the persistent battling, the nectar had been lost. The only way to retrieve the nectar of immortality was to churn the ocean of consciousness. This was a big job, too big for either the forces of good or evil to accomplish on their own. Successful churning would require unprecedented cooperation. <clears throat> so what ends up happening is that... Um, Shiva offers Mount Mandara as a churning stick. And then he asks his friend Vishnu 
to invest a portion of himself and he incarnates as a tortoise and it's on his back that the churning rests without tearing apart the fabric of the universe. So near the peak of the churning, a compact and dazzling multicolored gem appeared of such brilliance that it caused gasps of appreciation from the whirling assembly of celestials and demons. Even though both camps desperately wanted this bright, pulsing gem, neither had any understanding of its uses or powers. By its own radiant energy, it floated over the ever-compassionate Vishnu and melted into his chest, one hand width below the notch at his throat. Automatically, Vishnu began to speak. This jewel has chosen me as its abode. Through its power, I can make a thing happen by speaking out loud or by speaking silently. Whatsoever I utter with dedicated purpose will become so. This is the great wish-fulfilling gem that I will now use for protection of the pious and, the safe and to safeguard the development of saintly souls. I shall allow a portion of it to reside in those who are dear to me, who aid me in my divine tasks. Finished with his explanation, Vishnu turned back to the task of churning the ocean and exerted himself mightily. Suddenly, a shining woman of extraordinary beauty arose from the surging, swirling mist. Clad in a deep pink sari and bedecked with gold and precious stones, she floated to the side of the celestials and alighted softly. Even though her dress and ornaments would have commanded many fortunes of extravagant kings and queens, it was not that which grew rapt attention. So strikingly radiant with both beauty and compassion was her face that all were reduced to gaping. None of them have ever seen anything like her before. She was Lakshmi. For a long time, not a word was said as they all rested their troubles and cares in the soothing balm of her glance. Gone were the cares of conflicts, forgotten was any worry of the universe ceasing to be. Completely absent was any thought of the nectar of immortality, or the churning of the ocean of consciousness, or any other <clears throat> matter that had seemed all important just moments ago. Only the peace-giving serenity of her glance mattered. Resting in her gaze, all were completely satisfied in every way. Finally, she cast her eyes upward and spoke only one word. <laughs> 